heading to Georgetown for some circuits uh, get a bit of flying in before it gets dark Alright, um, I'm going to head up to Georgetown and do just some circuit practice really and um, hopefully heading to Old Seoul next week if the weather behaves. So just get some practice really of short takeoff landings and a lot easier to, to do that out at Georgetown. Um, before we do that I'm going to get us up to about 3,000 feet, have a practice of a few stalls, a bit of low flying, low speed flying. And um, I'll talk you through that when we get to it. I uh, hope you enjoy uh, enjoy this flight. Righto, welcome back. Nice up here today. So I'm going to have a look at some low flying or low speed flying in different configurations. Um, just helps get a feel for the aeroplane, what it's going to do. Typically in that sort of landing configuration before we go and shoot some circuits. So. Um, I think the first thing we'll do is we're just going to fly down, flaps up, so this is a normal configuration. Going to bring the throttle back, we're going to try and maintain, I'll get down to three and a half so we can get an accurate sort of height. And um, maintain uh, that, that height while reducing the speed. So basically what we're doing then is uh, increasing the angle of attack to keep us flying. And the slower we go, the more angle of attack we need. And you'll hear the term stall used quite often, and the stall is when you've got too much angle of attack that there's not enough air going over the wings. The aeroplane basically doesn't want to fly anymore and will usually tip forward, and then you have recovered from the stall. So, um, yeah, so we're at three and a half, so I'm going to bring the power back now. First thing we need to do, though, is just have a quick look around. No one underneath us. He's um, pretty quiet, been monitoring the radio of course. Just some clearing turns and I can see out through the roof which is great as well. Alright, so no aircraft and there's um, a fair bit of land there down below us too if we need it. But at this height we could make it a long way. Okay, so we're all clear. Go all the way around. Get a proper look. that no one else is doing anything up here today. Alright, looks good. Alright, we'll pick a point two. Let's pick um good port just up there on our nose. Alright, three and a half thousand. I've already got the power back a bit. And we're showing uh, 70 mile an hour or about 58 knots. So all we're gonna do is just slowly bring that back. Okay, you can see now we've lost 10 knots. Still holding height. And we're down to 50 knots. So that's pretty controllable at this rate. Like there's nothing too scary happening there. So let's just come back a little bit more. We're probably going to find around 40, 45 knots that's going to want to really start to sink. Okay, so where are we at now? Nearly 45 knots. Nose is high, maintaining the altitude. And there we are, 45 knots, still fairly controllable, nice and smooth, nothing drastic. So we'll just go a little bit more down on the power. We're still keeping that three and a half as you can sink now. Sink rate is increasing. We're down to 40 knots, 40 knots, no flaps, a little bit of power on, and we're still maintaining height. Pretty impressive, isn't it? 40 knots. Alright, so 40 knots. We're still okay with no flaps. And you're going to notice as we bring the power back the last bit. Okay, there's our stall. 
set it correct. Power increase back up. Now you can see we've lost two, three hundred feet there, and I'm sure that all the experts out there tell me I didn't do that right, but I just wanted to see that transition happen. And um, 200 feet is a lot if you're at 200 feet, isn't it? <laughs> it means you're going to be coming down onto the ground pretty hard. So what we want to do now is look at it with one stage of flat and then two stages of flat, and we're going to do the same thing. I'm going to turn through 180 degrees here. All clear, around we go. A little bit of a climbing turn, so the nose there is a bit higher, up past 50 knots. So I think what we can say is 40 knots, no flaps, is, is okay. Below 40 knots, you're either going to need a bit of power on, and in fact, I think we'll try that um, just for some difference. So we're going to head here towards, as you're going to get away from the sun, so we'll head a bit more towards um, Bell Bay out this way. Okay, we're going to level off three and a half. So what I'm going to do this time is actually increase the power once we get down to 40 knots and just see what it feels like with power on. So a power on, but with a slightly higher angle of attack. All right, so back at three and a half thousand feet. We're about through 50 knots. Okay, as we get to 40 knots, I'm going to trickle the power back in to see if it will be... what difference it makes, I guess. Let's see what happens with a bit of power on, because it's nice to know that if we put a bit of power on earlier, what's it going to do? Okay, so let's hold the nose there. Power's pretty low. Still maintaining most of our height, we've got up to 100 feet. Bit of a buffet there. So now what I'm going to do is increase the power. And actually, you don't really need much at all. We can keep the nose coming up. Still just above 40 knots. A bit more power. Okay, so that's 40 knots on the buzzer there. Just a bit of power. We have sunk a little bit. But there you go. 30, that's probably 38 knots. We are sinking still, a bit more power. 35, nearly. Okay, so that's pretty high nose attitude. I can really feel it buffeting there. Um, but it's really, you know, it's pretty stable. It's, I don't think you want to go much below that. It's going to want to stall. So let's just close over, bring the power up, get back to 3,500. Okay, so with the power on, it made it more controllable and probably just a few knots difference, maybe five knots. Um, you know, if we actually increase the power there, we would climb. The power to weight ratio of this aircraft is, is pretty good. Um, obviously one person and about half a tank of fuel makes a big difference too. All right, let's just aim this way and we'll have a go with the flaps, see what difference it makes, just making sure we're all clear. Okay, that looks good there, three and a half thousand. So let's bring it down a little bit. And when we increase, well, when we drop the flaps, we get a bit of a balloon effect. So we're gonna push the nose down, flaps down, nose down, okay? And that keeps us at that three and a half. But what that does now is increases effectively the angle of the wings, and that should allow us to fly a little bit slower. So let's just see what difference it makes. Uh, flaps on this one, first stage is 17 degrees. Okay, so three and a half, and you'll probably see a lower nose attitude because it's actually pitched the nose forward to get to those same speeds. All right, so here we are back at uh, three and a half thousand revs, coming through 45 knots, and much different view out the front um, because of that flaps has rotated the nose down. It's made the, basically it's moved the lift centre of the wing a little bit. All right, let's come back down again, still three and a half. So we're 45 knots there, not sinking little bit of sink. Okay, and that's 40 knots there, so that's quite a lot different, isn't it? Just keep coming back. And I think we'll comfortably get to pretty much 35 knots. There's 35. And that's pretty much the stall there, isn't it? So, in fact, what I'll do is I'll increase the power a bit, and you'll see it's still climb pretty much in that configuration there. So 35 knots, probably four or five knots difference. Not a huge amount. Go as slow as the nose. Throttle up, and then flaps up, it's nose up, okay? So flaps up. We want to put the nose up a bit just to counteract. Again, really mushy. I think the big difference is with the stage of flap there is it just becomes a better view out the front and probably slightly easier to recover and probably not quite as uh, a rapid rate of descent once it gets into that stall configuration. 
Um, just a disclaimer while everyone's watching this, I am not an instructor. Um, I've been flying since I was 16, which is a long time. But I'm learning, and that's what... I was paranoid and scared of, of spins and stalls and all those things. And when you want to fly an aeroplane like this and you want to land in short fields and paddocks and whatever else, if you can't operate your aircraft at those speeds, then, then it's super dangerous. Um, uh, it, it's always going to be a risk, but you can mitigate the risk by knowing how to operate the aeroplane correctly in different configurations at those lower speeds. Alright, um, so now let's just have a look at, get back down to the right height, and we'll just do a full flat version of the same thing. Alright, so we'll bring the power back, this is a bit like on a finals approach, we'll do it in two stages with the flap, let's just get down to three and a half. Okay, three and a half thousand. We can bring on one stage, flaps down, nose down. Okay, that looks good. And we can go to two stages, which is 26 degrees. So that's full flap now, 26 degrees. Speeds down already through 45 knots. So the second stage of flap usually adds, obviously, a considerable amount of drag. So we are getting lift, but it comes at a price, and that drag is slowing us down, which can help us, of course. So three and a half there, 45 knots. All of a sudden, it's just like happy days. We're just plodding along, low power setting. So we literally fly around 45 knots without too much concern. Let's bring the, the power back, back a bit and let's look at those, um, the difference here. Let's get to just 40 knots. Okay, there's 40 knots. And again, remember we were nearly 40 knots with no flaps and we were... You know, nose in the air, quite a dangerous situation with a high nose attitude. With here at 40 knots, probably 40 knots of ground speed there, 39 knots. Okay, 40 knots, maintaining altitude, trickle of power on, and it's quite nice. All right, so let's just see, I guess. I'm going to just actually come around a bit out of the sun there. Obviously, when you're turning at low speed, balance turns are super important. Okay. We're out of the sun, we're still plodding it along at 40 knots. Gonna bring the power back, we've dropped 100 feet there, just mushing. Now uh, let's have a look. Okay, so there's 35. And you can see the stick's back. There's actually quite a bit of buffeting there. And that's pretty much the stall there. There we go. So let's just see if we can just fly it at 35 knots though. 35 knots power on I don't want it gaining any height so when you're flying low speeds attitude controls your speed throttle controls your height is uh, something that all of your student pilots I'm sure have heard a thousand times so we just want to fly the attitude there for the speed and use the throttle to control our height so that's probably 36 knots there 35 knots so I guess what we're saying is that when I'm doing a short field landing the aim is to probably stop flying around that 30 knot mark and only be a foot off the ground or not even. Um, any higher than that, we're going to continue to fly. Um, obviously, in a, in a more conventional approach, then it's OK to, um, to fly, you know, higher speeds, and you want that safety margin there. The important thing is to recognise what it feels like, identify it early, and probably the first thing is, again, pick up the power. So let's just, again, look at... Let's just see if we can power out of it. So we, we've got nose high, full flaps, 35 knots, and as it gets there, if it feels a bit like, oh, yeah, we're not quite happy, if I power on, you know, we're gaining height straight away. All right? And we lower the nose, pick up a bit of speed. So ultimately, quite a docile aeroplane. Um, these are big wings, you know, fairly light. And it does make for a better aeroplane to fly. All right, flaps up. Nose up to compensate. And they're stowed. All right. So we're going to head to Georgetown, do some practice circuits, takeoffs and landings, and um, I hope that was uh, was useful. I mean, it's good for me just to talk it through. Certainly no expert. I watch a lot of stuff on YouTube and constantly learning. I feel like after 30-odd years of flying, I know nothing. 
Um, this sort of aeroplane is totally different to stuff I've flown in the past. But I have a ball flying it, and, um, and I think it really does let you learn about flying. Um, you know, big aeroplanes, you just pummel through the air, and it's comfortable and safe and all those things. But, you know, having these skills relates right across the board. So whether it's a small ultralight this, ultralight like this, or flying a, probably, you know, a conventional aeroplane or an, even an airliner, the same principles apply. I mean, it's still a wing, still air, and um, just the numbers change a little bit. So uh, I'll join you back on the ground at Georgetown. We'll set up some cameras. We're going to do some takeoffs and landings. OK, just overhead the field now, Georgetown, 1,000 feet. And do a right-hand circuit, 2-4, and land. Go and set up a couple of cameras and then go and shoot some circuits. What a beautiful day to be flying, eh? Alright, checks as we're turning on the downwind brakes are definitely on and off. Undercast down, fuel's on. Fixtures rich, choke set. Definitely all strapped in. Georgetown traffic, Bushcat 2508. So uh, turning downwind now uh, to four full stop, Georgetown. Bit of bumps there, a few bumps off the trees. So we're going to aim for the, the white line, I think. See how we go. of a floater, but nice and short otherwise. 